imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. Only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Hallelujah Will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you Jesus Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees forever forever worship you I can only imagine shall we pray Heavenly Father you are our Father, and hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins, and keep your hand upon us. Father, we are here today to celebrate the life of our friend, our husband, our father, our grandfather. And we're so appreciative, Father, that Gary was a part of our life. But Lord, you chose to take him home to be with you. I ask you, Lord, to let the Holy Spirit comfort, love, and embrace those that cherished him and those that love him. 
and let that love never die nor diminish. But Lord, increase us with our love. We ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. First of all, I want to say what an honor and a privilege it is for me to be with you here today. On these type of days, friends and loved ones become even dearer to our hearts. And I'm glad this family counts me as a friend and honors me on my birthday to be here to celebrate the homecoming of Gary. Gary was born September 17, 1950, in Shreveport, Louisiana, though he lived most of his life, of course, younger life, in Tenney Hall, Texas. He passed from this life into eternal life on August the 6th, 2021, in San Marcos, Texas. His father was Otis Winfrey II, mother, Moselle Black. We want to thank Larry Funeral Home for their uh, wonderful hospitality and for their care for this family. His wife, of course, survives him, Carrie Winfrey. He's also survived by daughters, Jennifer Elizabeth Winfrey, stepdaughter Tracy Board and husband Michael, daughter-in-law Danielle Laos, a brother, Jimmy Hamilton Winfrey, grandchildren, Olivia Board, Archer Ellis Laos, and Kyle Austin Hand. Preceded in death, his father, Otis Winfrey II, his mother, Moselle Black Winfrey, a brother, Otis Kenton Winfrey III, and stepson, Richard Laos. Then 
Amazing grace. It is grace that we look to today. This is a solemn day, but at the same time, it is a day of celebration. We're here to celebrate the very full life of our friend, husband, father, grandfather, Gary. 1 Corinthians 13, I'll not read the whole chapter, but I'll read a few scriptures from that. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not its her own. It's not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. If I was to use one word that described Gary, it would be love. Gary loved life. He loved family, he loved friends, he loved his children, his grandchildren, and first and foremost, he loved God. Because without God, that true love for all of the others just would not exist. For God is love. I had the privilege of meeting Gary about 12 years ago. I had been out of state and had moved back to Texas just before our 40th class reunion and kind of jumped off in there with the group and got my feet wet, planning and putting some things together. And then of course we had the reunion and I met Gary and I was kind of blown back by the fact that he seemingly just wanted to talk. <laughs> and I've got all this business I've got to do, but we talked. He talked, I listened. <laughs> and I knew right off, I like this guy. And it was a great, a great reunion. Good to see our classmates and some of them here today. And then there was the 45th. There he was again. You know what he was doing? Talking. <laughs> Visiting. Then came that sacred 50th. Well, guess what? Same Gary. Never changed. Except we seemingly had more to talk about this time. And my wife, who was unable to be with me here today, pointed out, she said, do you remember 
when we were trying to get that unruly class of 69 to stand still for a group picture. And in order to get the picture, she said, I had to stand up in a chair. And it was Gary that came to my rescue. And she said, not only did he help me get up in the chair, he braced me to be sure that I didn't fall the entire time I was trying to take that photograph of these folks that just would not stand still. And she said, then he, as a gentleman that he was, helped me down from the chair. She said, I will always remember that about Gary and his gentlemanly nature. Gary, of course, had two older brothers. And when I say older, I mean quite a few years, like 10 years older. And there was an accident. And Gary was three. And they backed over him, I believe. Put him in a hospital for a couple of weeks. And that's an injury that he had with him all the days of his life. But he addressed that injury in his occupation as a rehabilitation counselor, particularly for those who had head injuries. God allows things into our life that we are going to be able to pass on to others. And there was many things in Gary's life that he is passing on to you as family and to us as friends. It's kind of unique how sometimes God plans our lives and orders our footsteps. Gary never met a stranger. This, this, this is kind of comical to me, and I, I got to mention, I want, first of all, I want to thank Tracy for sending me this info. I've been reading it for two days, and I still haven't quite grasped it all, so y'all bear with me. But he and Terry met in 1964 when they were just 14 years old, and they met at church camp. And they had their little group of close friends. And uh, I think Gail was a part of that group, was she not? Gail Sampson, who's here today, part of that group. And this is at church camp now. And they were known as the Fearsome Five and the Sexy Six <laughs> at church camp. <laughs> I wish I'd been Methodist. <laughs> but I was a Pentecostal, and those terminologies were not accepted. <laughs> However, there were other terminologies that we referred to that I will not address. He went on to date Gail for five years, and that kept Terry kind of in the mix here. And uh, of course, when he graduated high school, 69, as did Terry, since he had been dating her good friend, they continued, you know, to be together socially. Gary never, never met a stranger. He would talk that all that would listen. I can testify to that. And, of course, he spent a year at Tyler Junior College, then came back to SFA and became a member of the Delta Sig fraternity. But that year he partied kind of hard and uh, was put on ac academic suspension. And I'm saying, Gary? <laughs> on suspension? His father had passed away when he was 10, so he was basically raised by his mother. And so he just went back home to mom. 
But then he moved to Austin, lived for many years, met his first wife, and they had one child, Jennifer. And uh, she was very most important person, one of the most important persons in his life. But he didn't care for the divorce, but they continued to um, raise their daughter. And then Gary moved back in 1987 to SFA and finished what he had started, basically. Then come that momentous meeting, 1988. He and Terry wound up at the SFA One Dollar Movie. <laughs> so I asked Terry last night, did he ever ask for his dollar back? She said, yeah, I think she had to think about it a second or two. She said, no. Now I'm asking her, did you ever ask for a dollar back? No. no. <laughs> Knowing how inflation is rising now, that'd been about a 20 buck deal back then, yeah. now. But that was in 1987 where fate brought it together. Then they were, of course, married. Oh, it was that, you know, uh, um, in 1988 when that happened, and of course they married. And the next 30 years was being rewarded in marriage. There's no way that time will allow me to go through everything that I was given, but he loved to talk to people. He never met a stranger. And I thought this was, this was unique. So he and Terry go on their honeymoon to Vegas, right? And you know, when you're on your honeymoon, I, you kind of focus on one another, correct? I mean, I went to Vegas too, Terry, for my honeymoon to, to Pam. And this has got to be uh, an award given to Terry because the whole trip there to Vegas, he's sitting there talking to a total stranger with her sitting there on the honeymoon. And to make it even more impact on how he never met a stranger, on the way back he meets somebody else and he's talking to, to this guy. And Terry just sitting there, I suppose, just happy to be married. I could not see Pam sitting there for that, <laughs> you know? And I thought that was really unique. Gary loved to read. And his reading started very early because he became a reader and a collector of comic books. And just had, and even when they come out on CD, he's got all these CDs of comic books and everything. And I just, I just, my heart, I said, comic books, man. Do you know how bad I wanted to read a comic book, but my mother wouldn't let me have one? Oh, dear. <laughs> I never read comic books, especially Archie, because Veronica's dress was way too short <laughs> for my Pentecostal heritage. But he had all these comic books, and I was caught sneaking, looking at a few one time, and I got a pretty good slap on the left cheek, but it was amazing to me that his reading and love to read started at such a very young age. And he still has them. What a collection. And the movies. Goodness. Wow. <laughs> and that's what made him so unique, people. He had a uniqueness about him, and it's, it's amazing. His personality was so vibrant. Very rarely would you see him sad or lonely. He always had a smile on his face. He loved to be around others. He loved to travel. He recently went with his wife to Marco Island, Florida, with their friends Dennis and Brenda Boatman, another one of our classmates, Grossi to travel together to the Bahamas and different places in Florida. His family was his pride and joy in life. He will be missed. When I read such as this about Gary, I'm reminded of a scripture. In Ephesians 4 and 13, Paul wrote, till we all come 
in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And I have believed for many years that there are really three things that we should concentrate on in our life. And that is to manifest the nature, the spirit, and the character of Jesus Christ our Lord. The nature we read about in the four gospels, the spirit, of course, by means of the Holy Spirit, those two combined should equal to our character. And with Gary Winfrey, I can see that manifested to me. His character, his manner, his love, his willingness to help, his dedication to his family, to his profession, everything that this man could possibly be here on earth. Was he perfect? Far from it, as any of us are. Did he strive to be better? I'm sure it was a daily part of his life. We will miss his smile, we will miss his jokes, his laughter. We will miss his good times. I'll close with this. At the 50th, after everything was done, Terry and Gary invited us up to their room at the Fredonia. And we stayed there for a little while. And beside Richard Bright being there, Gary was the life of the party. Because Richard was in true form. And we had a wonderful time, Terry. My wife and I talk about it often. Thank you for including us in, in that after party party. Of course, we had church the next day, so I had to get home and take care of getting right with the Lord. But nevertheless, <laughs> we had a wonderful time. Gary will always be remembered. Let the Holy Spirit comfort you today. When Jesus was about to depart, his chosen. The one thing he told them said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will pray the Father and he will send you the Holy Spirit and it will comfort you. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to comfort and to love and embrace you through times like this. Yes, we will miss him, but we will see him again. Father, these words come from you. You know the man. He's there with you now, I do believe. I pray, Lord, your strength and your comfort over this family and over these friends. He will be missed, and especially in the next days to come. But in time, with your help, we will get through it. He's missed and will be missed the rest of our days. Bless this family. Keep your hand upon them and protect them through these times. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.
no possessions 